Wa alaikum salam, Shaykhna. So nice to see you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. And yourself? Yeah, yeah, like guys. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the topic as well as uh, our esteemed Sheikh for tonight. We are honored to have the presence of Sheikh Imran Damani with us for a two-hour course on the glimpses of excellence from the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam. As we all know, this is the month in which his uh, shahadat uh, takes place. And therefore, it is of utmost importance for us to know the personality that is our first Imam alayhi salam. The first of these two sessions, which is tonight, will uh, be covering the topic of Imam Ali alayhi salam, the living Quran. And tomorrow we will have Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahjul Balagha. Both these will be given to us by the respected Sheikh, who is a senior scholar in uh, Qum, a senior student in Qum, uh, and also an active part of the activities that go around for the Kojas and non-Kojas in Qum. And with that, I would like to have the honor of introducing and uh, inviting Sheikh Imran Damani to take over and conduct our class for today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah jameean. Brother Muhammad Hussein, just before we begin, I'd like to share my screen if that's possible, but it's uh, saying the host has disabled the participant screen sharing. Sure, no worries. Uh, the admin is uh, in the meeting right now. Admin, sure. if we could please uh, make uh, Sheikh uh, the co-host. Okay, Sheikh, you are now the co-host and you can share your screen. Thank you so much. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجا. My dear brothers and sisters um, and the respected scholars, I greet you with salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And I would like to extend my gratitude to Brother Muhammad Hussein and the other brothers and sisters involved in putting together this um, important set of discussions that you've had with Sheikh Ali and Sheikh Qadim uh, and myself. Um, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity uh, that you guys have given us uh, to share even a small amount of what um, may or may not be beneficial for you guys. Um, but without further ado, please recite a salawat uh, and inshallah we'll begin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, Brother Muhammad saying, just one last time, can you just clarify that you can see my screen and you can see my picture as well, just so that I know everything's in order? Yes, Sheikh, we can see both. Fantastic. Okay. So before I begin uh, this topic, <clears throat> I was thinking much about the title before we uh, put together this presentation. Uh, and it made perfect sense to me uh, that the status of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And his link to the Qur'an will not be able to be understood at all until and unless we understand the link of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi with the Qur'an. So although we've been given the topic of Imam Ali alayhi salam in the Qur'an, and this is the heading of my presentation as well, I would like, with your permission, to, track, to trace back and track back to realize the link of Rasulullah with the Qur'an Al-Kareem uh, Al itself. And once we've understand the station of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu understanding Amir Al-Mu'mineen Alayhi salam station will become very easy and um, clear for us to establish this link. Prior to getting into uh, this topic, <clears throat> we need to understand uh, in actual fact what the status of the Qur'an is, what the status of the Holy Messenger is, but not from a hadith, but from the Qur'an itself. Because the topic today was, of course, Imam Ali in the Qur'an. 
In order for us to understand Imam Ali in the Quran, we said we need to understand Rasulullah in the Quran. So what has the Quran said about Rasulullah? However, again, how am I supposed to understand Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the Quran until I've understood the Quran itself? Okay, so let's trace back a few steps and with your permission, we'll have a look and see what's actually going on. Shah Ramadan has uh, come again and blessed us with the opportunity to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this holy month, whereby Rasulullah has told us of its merits. Shah Ramadan is actually a haqiqah. It's something that exists. It's a reality. There is nur. There is light. There is spiritual progress. This month has been spiritually charged with so much kirama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's befitting for the month of Ramadan to host the Holy Quran. You have to understand that the Holy Quran uh, and its magnificence required a capacity for it to be revealed in. And what better capacity than the greatest of months, the greatest of nights, and the greatest time in the night as well. But let's look a little bit closer at what the actual Quran says and utilizing the words of the Quran in order for us to realize what's actually going on here. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Shahru Ramadan. Everyone knows this. Shahru Ramadan. Alladhi unzila fihil Quran. In the Quran, we see that the word inzal or tanzil has come, which means in plain English to be revealed. But if we look a little bit more closely and carefully, inzal or tanzil is actually to make something move downwards. To reveal it is almost a result of the actual meaning. We take the result of being revealed because something is coming down. The Holy Quran itself speaks about the word inzal and tanzil in two ways. The first way is what we call madi, a physical form. So, for example, we have in Surah Al-Hadid, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ That we have sent down iron, i.e. iron that has been sent from outside of earth downwards, i.e. we can say that this sending down, this coming down, is a physical form of coming down. Okay? وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ but how about a non-physical, a what we call a metaphysical or a ma'nawi sense of the word? When we look at the Quran and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's revealed this Quran or he sent this Quran down, many a time, perhaps we haven't thought about this, but many a time we assume that on the night of Qadr, that potentially a book of the Quran has come down to the Holy Messenger, okay, in a very simplistic form that the Holy Qur'an was re revealed as a book form. But in, actually, in actual fact, what the Qur'an is suggesting here is not a physical form, rather a metaphysical. Or we would say, it's not that the Qur'an has come down from one makan to another makan, i.e. one place to another place. From that place there to this place here. Rather, when it's talking about the Qur'an being revealed, it's saying that it's revealed, it's being revealed from one maqam, one higher station, one higher echelon, one higher station, higher up comparative to this of the dunya. I.e., when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have revealed this Quran in the month of Ramadan, He's saying that from the higher echelons of the spiritual realms of above, we are now revealing this Quran. We are letting this Quran transcend lower stations so that it can manifest itself in the dunya, not in a physical book form. Rather, there is a haqiqah, there is a truth of this Quran that is found in higher realms of spirituality. And it is now being it's been made accessible to us in the dunya. Okay. Question. This Qur'an that is being revealed, who is it benefiting? These are three verses that very likely you've read before. But again, perhaps we have to pay a bit more closer attention to the words of the Qur'an. Brothers and sisters, just in brackets here. 
Reading the Qur'an, there is thawab. Reading the Qur'an with meaning and translation, there is potentially even more thawab because you're understanding the Qur'an. But I cannot stress, we spend a lot of time with social activities. Last time I was in Dar es Salaam, uh, there was a huge emphasis on boarding, if I'm not correct. Muhammad Rada, is that Imam Hussain, is that correct? Boarding, is that what you guys called it? Last time I was there in Dar es Salaam, a huge That's emphasis true. on sports and extra etc which is great we all love sports we're all football fans okay but we have to portion some time for ourselves in this um socially connected world where we can take advantage of the internet okay but what do i mean by that we have to if it's not available in dar es salaam or in east africa we have to make use of the potential online capabilities of learning the Qur'an by, by reading the Arabic language and learning the Qur'an. Okay? Gone are the times where we should just be relying on the translation. We need to up our game, brothers and sisters. Everyone here, alhamdulillah, has got the ability and has got the time to learn Arabic, Qur'anic Arabic, at a very basic level. And believe me, it doesn't take long to do so. And if we were to just invest a small amount of time to do this, we would have masses of discussions, much deeper discussions, much better understandings, clearer, filtered discussions when we are discussing the Qur'an. Let's have a look a bit closely as to the meanings of these ayat. Shahrul Ramadan, الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Then it says, Hudan linnas, The month of Ramadan, in which the Qur'an has been revealed. Okay? What is it? It's a guidance for who? It's benefiting mankind. Linnas. So that's one ayah. Another ayah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This verse is suggesting that this guidance in this book, or I should say this book has guidance in it, within it, and it's benefiting now the, the muttaqeen. But look closely at the last verse. And there are other verses, of course, like this, but I just picked these three because of time purposes. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِجِبْرِيلًا فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever is an enemy of Jibra'il, then certainly we have sent down, we have revealed from one higher station to a lower station, this book, Nazalahu, we have revealed it, where ala qalbik is talking to the Holy Messenger now. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Bi we have done this with our permission or with the permission of Allah, in order to verify that which was between your hands, i.e., the Torah and the Injil. What is it again? It's a guidance and a glad tidings for who now? The Mu'mineen. Okay? So this Quran that has been revealed is a benefit to a, a large group of people. One time it says the muttaqin, another time it says the mu'mineen, another time it says nas, mankind in general. But if I can ask you to focus on the red, bolded, fonted lines here. Nazalahu ala qalbik. The question next that comes in our mind is, to where has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Qur'an? Sure. Sure. No problem. I'll... I'll, I'll mention to you the um i'll mention mention to you the ayat and the um if you give me a moment if i'm not mistaken let me find this this final verse the other ones i've quoted them for you uh, just while i'm finding this please recite a salawat allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajil farajul So this final verse is of course in Surah Baqarah verse 97. So قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِجِبْرَيْلِ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ So for the sister who wanted the quotation, this is Surah Baqarah verse 97. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهُ وَدَنْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ is of course Surah Al-Baqarah uh, verse number 2. And with respect to شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ أَلَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Again, this would be found in Surah Al-Baqarah and it is verse number <coughs> 185. Okay? 
So this Quran is benefiting different people. However, we have said that, where is this Quran being revealed to? Brothers and sisters, we have to establish this link in order to understand Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi link to the Quran. So please pay close attention. Where is this Quran being uh, revealed upon? It's being revealed on the heart of the Holy Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Look closely. In Surah Al-Shu'ara, we have three ayat which are very important. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nazala bihi ruhu al-Ameen. Ala qalbika litakuna min al-Mundhirin. Very important. Nazala bihi ruhu al-Ameen. That it has come down. The ruhu al-Ameen. Alongside the ruhu al-Ameen. Ala qalbik litakuna min al-Mundhirin. It's come down on your heart, Ya, ya Rasulullah. In order that you are the warner for the other people. Bilisan in Arabian Mubin. It's referring to the Quran here. This is a paragraph that I've written here, important. Look, look what it says. It says various parts of the Quran, or various ayat of the Quran. It actually, the Quran makes the Prophet Sallallahu role the central role. And he is the one who comes to explain the revelation to us. He is the one that comes to make the Quran accessible for us, not the other way around. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa is the one that's able to take the Quran that's being revealed for the benefit of mankind, for the benefit of the Muttaqeen, for the benefit of the Mu'mineen. But it is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa that this is revolving around. I.e. without Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa you and I would not be able to understand the Quran properly. Very simple. Let me give you some examples to demonstrate this. In Surah An-Nahl, now here all the ayat are, should be referenced. If not, please just uh, go on the chat and just uh, mention as you as you as you did before. In Surah An-Nahl, look carefully at the ayat. We need to go one by one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ma anzalna alayka al-kitab illa li tubayyin lahum al-ladhi ikhtalafu fi. We did not reveal this book, or we did not reveal this book where? Alayka. In the Arabic language, brothers and sisters, we have alayka and we have alaykum. Alayka means one person. Alaykum, like we say, assalamu alaykum jami'an. We would use the word kum, the pronoun kum, to, de to denote a mass uh, pe group of people that I'm addressing here. But rather in the Quran, and this is a challenge, whenever we have anzalna or nazalna or anzala, and we have the preposition of ala, not ila, ila is different. I'm making that very clear right now. When we have the word ala that comes after anzalna or nazalna, the Quran in its beauty and entirety only addresses anzalna alayka, never alaykum. It's a challenge. Go and look for it yourselves. The Quran is being revealed upon one person only, and that is none other than An Nabiul Mustafa, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. What does it say? We have not revealed this book upon you, ya Muhammad, except that you li lahum, that you are the one that makes clear for them that which they that which they are differing in. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ If you do so, if you are able to make clear to them that which they have differed in, this Qur'an will have what result? It will have the result of being a guidance and a rahma for those people who believe. Another example. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Again, look carefully. نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We have, but we don't have ala. The Qur'an says, we have revealed this towards you now, the dhikr, the Qur'an. For what reason? For it to make clear for the people? No. Nope. The Qur'an is not the one making clear. The mubayyin, the person who makes clear, is none other than Rasulullah. We have revealed this towards you, i.e. the Qur'an, in order that you, ya Muhammad, make clear for everyone. You are the one that has the Qur'an in your heart. You are the one that is able to make clear for the people. What it is they have to understand from the Quran. 
another ayah, Surah An-Nahl again. وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَلَيْكَ عَلَيْكَ وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Ya Muhammad, we have revealed upon your heart, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the book. In what state? In the state that it is able to be a tibyan, it's able to be a clarifier for every single thing. And the result, wahudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin. That it's a guidance, a mercy, and a glad tidings for those people who submit. Surah Al Ankabut, we're going to be reciting this on Layal Al Qadr. You know we have riwayat, one ayah, one ayah that we understand correctly raises us in one daraja in Jannah. I was reading, just in brackets, I was reading the advice from one of the urafa that is buried here in Qum. He said, one ayah a day that you guys should be doing tadabbur on. You should be thinking over it and trying to make it as part of your essence. What does it say in Surah Ankabut? أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَرَحْمَةً وَذِكْرَى لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Does it not suffice them that we have revealed upon you the holy book, Ya Rasulullah? Again, who's in charge of this revelation now? Who is this revelation coming to? None other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Surah Al-Zumar إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ لِلنَّاسِ Look at this. Perfect example. If you want to summarize everything that we've said just now, look at this. Certainly we have revealed upon you, Ya Rasulullah, the book for the people. Not that we've revealed it onto the people. Rather, we've revealed the book upon you for the people, for that, in order for you to go and benefit the people now. Okay? Once we've understood this example or this realization that this book is something that was gifted to Rasulullah, this was gifted to the Holy Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then we can begin to realize what the reality of this revelation is. Okay, We said that the Qur'an has come down from one station to another station, not physically, but in terms of its spiritual state. But what is this Qur'an that has come down? What is it? Okay, So if you look at Surah Al-Ankabut, again, we're going to be reciting this on the night of Layal Al-Qadr. If we were to understand this ayah, brothers and sisters, it makes a world of difference to our concepts that are in our minds. Look carefully what it says. It says, Bal, when it's, when it's discussing the Qur'an, it's talking about the Qur'an. The context of this verse is that it's discussing the Qur'an and its realities. What does it say? It says, Bal, rather, huwa ayatun bayyinatun fi sudurin ladhina utul ilm. Very important says, rather, this Qur'an, you want to know the reality of this Qur'an? You want to know the real haqiqah behind this Qur'an? Let me tell you what it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rather, these are ayat, this Qur'an. What are they? They are ayatun bayyinat. They are clear signs. Where? In a book? Between two volumes? Between two hardbacks? No. Where is this ayatun bayyinat found? Fi sudur ladina. This Qur'an, the reality of this Qur'an, the haqiqah of this Qur'an is found where? In the chests of those people that have been given ilm. This Qur'an fi sudur al-ladheen utul ilm. Allahu Akbar. The reality of the Qur'an is found in none other than the chest of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And in plenty of riwayat, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam comes to say that someone comes to ask Imam al-Baqir, we understand Rasulullah, that's from, from outside of the, the riwayah. But what about this plural? Who are these people that have been given the ilm? So Imam al-Baqir says, can it be anyone other than us that has these ayatun bayyinat in their chests? We are the ones. I.e. the first of these people is none other than Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi. So, this is the reality. Right. Now that I've understood that the Quran has come down from a higher level to a lower level of stations, I've understood that it has been revealed upon the Prophet. I've understood that it's for the benefit for mankind, for muttaqeen, for mu'mineen, but via the Holy Messenger. How can I understand my relationship 
me as an individual with Allah and Rasulullah in the middle. Because if this Quran has come to benefit me, if I'm part of Nas, which I am, if the Quran has come to benefit mankind, but I am being ordered now to go and seek it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, what type of position is Rasulullah in my life? What type of station should I be seeing him in my life? Look carefully at one of the lines that we were reading in Salawat al-Sha'baniyya just last month. And this is just an example, brothers and sisters, okay? Because of a lack of time, I've brought one example of each thing. But we could go on and on and on as to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, as well as riwayah, has placed an Nabiul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi as our pathway to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look carefully what it says. It says, Allahumma waj'alhu li shafi'an mushaffa'a. O oh Allah, appoint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi as my intercessor, whose intercession has been accepted from you. Then, a very important line. If you guys refer back to Ziyarat, to Salawat al-Sha'baniyya, it says the following line. Allahumma waj'alhu li shafi'an mushaffa'a. Wa tariqan ilayka mahya'a. O oh Allah, appoint him, Rasulullah, as my clear path towards you. Let's listen carefully and understand what Imam Sajjad is saying here. He's not saying, make Rasulullah show me the path towards Allah. He's not saying, make Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah lead me towards the path so I can find it and then travel, traverse the path to Allah myself. No. Appoint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi as my path. Brothers and sisters, do you know what this means? Allahu Akbar. An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is the path of Allah. I want to go towards Allah. I want to make Allah happy in terms of him being radi, radi Allahu anhu wa radu an. If I want real ridaya of Allah, I need to walk the path that Allah has chosen for me. What's that path? The path, the Muhammadi path. I have to take Rasulullah as my sirat. Look what it says, very beautiful in Sur Surah Al-Fatiha. Perhaps we haven't paid close attention to this. It says, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. The first dua in the whole Quran that we see that Allah is instructing us to make, the first dua is that of guidance. And he says, Guide us to the straight and upright path. Then the Quran comes to clarify what is that path. It doesn't say that path that is straight and has like, you know, thawab on it, or the path that you have to recite Quran in it, or you have to do amal al salih in it, you have to respect your parents in it, or you have to show love towards a certain group of individuals. No. Clearly. He says, المستقيم, Guide me to the straight and upright path. Then he makes it a personification of a certain set of individuals. What does that mean? He says, this path, you want me to describe it for you? It's the path of a group of people. The path are a group of people. In Arabic, we say, is mudaf, mudafun ilay. I.e., it's the path of a group of people. Guide me to the path of those people that you have established your ni'mah upon them. Who is this? None other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his Ahlul Bayt. They are the pathway towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look closely. This was supposed to be a Quranic orientated discussion. Imam Ali in the Quran. So forgive me, but look carefully at these ayat and ponder on the station of Rasulullah and thereafter the station by default of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salawatul musalleen look carefully what it says this first ayah is found in Surah Al-Fatih Surah Al-Fatih which is Surah number 48 verse number 10 look closely at what it says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim inna al-ladheena yubayi'oonaka Certainly those people who come to give bay'ah to you, Ya Muhammad, 
إنما يبايعون الله. Those people who come to give bay'ah to you, Ya Rasulullah, they are not giving bay'ah to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are not giving bay'ah to you, aslan wa abadan. They are giving bay'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine someone going to give their hand in bay'ah to Rasulullah? The Qur'an is telling us that we're actually giving bay'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. Not in a physical, simplistic-minded form that na'udhu billah, this is the hand of Allah. No. By me giving bay'ah to Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I have established my obedience. It's a longitudinal trace back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ The next ayah demonstrating the station of Rasulullah is in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 80. What does it say? It says, مَنْ يُطِعِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar. Whoever obeys the Holy Messenger, certainly they have obeyed Allah. I.e. the Messenger's obedience is the same obedience as that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a station this is. That the Rasul, this is all Quran, this isn't no hocus pocus, uh, uh, misverified ahadith, dalil dhanni. No, these are dalil qat'i, the station of Rasulullah needs to be understood. Whoever is obedient to Rasulullah, certainly they have been obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. Or another ayah. This is in Surah Al-Ibrahim, verse number one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Ra. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka. Certainly, Alif Lam Ra. This is a book. We have revealed it towards you. For what reason? Look carefully what it says. Litukhrijannas. Ya Rasulullah. You are the one who is able to remove people. From what to what? Min al-dhulumati ila nur Isn't our aim in life to become what we call nurani? Isn't our aim in life to become enlightened with the light of Allah <coughs> forgive me the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi's role according to Surah Ibrahim verse number one is that he is the one responsible to take us from darkness into light subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said here that the Quran can take you from darkness to light no Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Anzalnahu Ilayka. We've revealed it towards you, Ya Rasulullah, so that you are able to take mankind from darkness into light. With what? With the permission of their Lord. Ila Sirat al Aziz al Hamid. The last ayah is in Surah Al Jama'ah. I think it's the second or third ayah, must be the second ayah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا He is the one that has selected, raised and sent forward to mankind بعث is select, raise and send forward هو الذي, he it is, i.e. Allah عز وجل is the one who is selected, raised and sent forward في الأميين Amongst those people of Ahlul Qura, the people of Mecca, he's raised forward a Rasul. What type of characteristics does this Rasul from amongst them have? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. He recites the ayah upon them, i.e., he recites the Quran for them. But look carefully at this following part. This is critical. Once they once they are recited the verses from Rasulullah, is it Plausible to suggest that Rasulullah recites the ayat for me and I myself purify myself. It's plausible, right? We can all imagine a scenario whereby Rasulullah recites the ayat of Quran and thereafter 
I am able to purify myself. I'm able to take on board lessons, etc. That's fine. It's possible. Okay. But what does the Quran say? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim. Allahu Akbar. It says that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is the one responsible for purification of themselves. It is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi that does the process of tazkiyah. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْثَ بِالْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ The station of Rasulullah is one that he is a muzakki. He is the one that comes to purify our souls. He is the one that's able to take us from darkness to light. He is the one that his obedience is the obedience of Allah. He is the one that his bay'ah is the bay'ah of Allah Azza wa Jal. How is this therefore linked towards Amir al Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi? We have in the uh, in the Quran this verse, this following verse. Wa yaqulu al-ladina kafaru lasta mursala. Those people who disbelieve, they say that you are not a messenger. This is in Surah Al-Ra'd. Verse number 43, Surah 13, verse number 43. Those people who disbelieve say, Ya Rasulullah, you are not a messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Rasulullah a response to tell them. He says, say to them the following, Kafa billahi shahida. It's enough that Allah is a witness between me and, and you. And who else is a enough to be a witness between me and you? وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Say to these people who disbelieve that between me, say to them that Allah is sufficient as a witness between me, me Rasulullah, and you, the people who disbelieve, and also a second individual. Who is that individual? He has this trait, he has this quality. وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ the person that with him is the knowledge of the book. Right. This verse in the Quran, we would deem it to be something called Mujmal. We don't know who that person is. Until and unless we have a decent set of evidences to suggest to us with Itma'nan, with a decent level of certainty that this person is X, Y or Z, this verse remains ambiguous. Interestingly, when I was looking at the riwayat of this verse and the tafsir of this ayah, we have got so many ahadith, plenty of ahadith, with secured narrations of the chain of narrations as well, the narrators in the chain, are those people that have been qualified and quantified and um, checked amongst the grand scholars. Okay, I don't want to bore you with the people that have narrated this hadith, but it has come from two different pathways, okay? One of those pathways, there are individuals that have been mentioned that are very trustworthy, but there's a gap. The second pathway, all of the individuals that have been mentioned are trustworthy individuals? No, they are superly trustworthy individuals that all of the main scholars of Rijal have come to authenticate this. So we've got two pathways on this particular hadith, and then we've got lots and lots of other hadith on the same ayah with different imams or different words. But in a nutshell, let me read to you what Imam al-Baqir has said here. Um, he says this ayah, قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ The imam says, إِيَّانَا عَنَا وَعَلِيٌّ he says, this ayah, it means us and only us. I.e. Ana, yani I.e. Wa aliyun awaluna. And the first of these people that have this ilmul kitab. See guys, brothers and sisters, now that you've understood the importance of this kitab and where it was revealed, on to who it's revealed and the importance of it. Now, when we see that the person who has the ilm of this kitab, is none other, the first of those people is none other than Amir al Mu'mineen. Sayyid al Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi. He says, Wa Aliyun awaluna wa afdaluna 
Allahu Akbar. Imam al Baqir says, He's the first, he's the most virtuous, and he's the best one after the Holy Prophet. And therefore, if we are able to, um, number one, understand the importance of the Quran, where it's come from, the haqiqah behind the Quran. If we're thereafter, to, if the, we are thereafter able to understand what we are gaining from the Quran, the benefit is for who and who it is that's actually divulging this nur, this this ability for us to grasp onto this nur. Okay, we will therefore be able to understand the station of Rasulullah. We'll be able to understand the a presence of Rasulullah and his ability to link this all back to him and back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereafter, once we're able to establish this very connection, we are then able to trace this back now to those people who have been granted the ilm and granted the uh, ability to access this holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I will do is I will I've come to the end of my presentation. What I will do is I will open the floor, uh, Brother Muhammad Hussein, to uh, anyone who has any ambiguities or any questions, etc. And if I'm able to answer it, then Fabiha. May Allah give us the tawfiq to do so. If I'm not able to answer it, then inshallah, we can ask teachers here. We can ask uh, other people to help us and giving the answer to those questions. And inshallah, we'll be at your service so i will throw the floor open to brother muhammad hussein and before i do so please recite a salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad shaykhna thank you so much for such an enlightening class uh, one that has a basis in nubuwa and is taking us towards imama inshallah Brothers and sisters, we have uh, come to the end of the session for today from the side of the Sheikh, but the most important part is obviously to also verify and get our uh, queries sorted. So if there is anybody with any questions, please do make use of the chat box or uh, if you would like to speak out your question, uh, please do raise your hand and the admin will unmute you. In the meantime, um, I would like to thank the Sheikh for uh, such uh, in impactful knowledge and such practical knowledge. One thing, Sheikh, I personally, if I were to just uh, hey. take uh, one step forward uh, sure. in asking a question, uh, you mentioned in the beginning that it is uh, very important for us to take uh, a part of our day and uh, actually dedicate part of our schedule to learning uh, deeper into the Holy Quran. Could yes. you share with us some sources where we could uh, uh, partake in courses online or if there's any current course that is running that we sure. could use to start our journey into the Quran? Yes, okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, uh, I'm not sure whether or not in Dar es Salaam such courses are running, but certainly in England uh, and in America and in Canada, we have got courses running called Ilm al-Quran or ILM Quran. Basically, in a nutshell, um, the teacher should come and go through with you the repeated patterns in the Arabic language and repeated vocabulary in the language of Arabic to such an extent whereby if you were to finish the first book, there's, there's about three books, three volumes. If you were to finish the first book, um, you would be able to grasp without looking at a translation around 40% of the Quran. You see, the way the Quran has been structured is that many of the verbs and many of the phrases and many of the sentences are uh, very similar to one another. It's just the vocabulary that changes, okay? So by doing such a course, you are able to now shorten that distance, that disparity of learning between yourselves and the Quran. So this is a key course. I think this course should be um, compulsory for madrasa students that are sort of 14, 15 year old. Certainly I've suggested this in, um, in, in London. I don't know what the situation is in Dar es Salaam or, 
or Nairobi or other places that you guys are, are logged in from. But this is a critical, critical thing that we need to get on the ball, get rolling ASAP. Okay, because the 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 main barrier between Muslims and the Quran is a language barrier, nothing else. Once that language barrier is removed, the sweetness starts to filter down. Yeah. Santum Sheikh, thank you very much. We have uh, Brother Ali Al Mahdi who has raised his hand. Brother sure. Ali, please. Uh, Bismillah. Salam alaikum salam rahmatullah. On the on the subject of the pronouns, yeah. uh, you mentioned the, the last verse of Surah Rad, which says uh, "In the Who Il Mul Kitab." Mm -hmm. Then why is it that we are looking at the "In the Who," which is in a singular form? Uh, why are we looking at it as a group of people and not just one person that is Imam Ali? We are looking at it as one person. With this ayah, we're looking at it as one person. Waman indahu, i.e. this is one person. Doesn't say waman indahum. It says waman indahu ilmul kitab. So according to this verse, if we didn't have any riwayat whatsoever, we have just this one verse. This is alluding to one singular person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, tell them that it is enough that Allah is the witness and that one person next to you that has the ilm of kitab. At that moment in time, there was none other than Amirul Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. If it's just us and the ayah, that is the answer to the question. However, it doesn't stop there. When Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam is that first example, but he himself hands the wilaya down to the next of the A'imma alayhi salam. And those A'imma alayhi salam are the sharik of the Quran according to Hadith al thaqalain When Imam al Baqir alayhi salam says, عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ زَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ but this is now transferred to all of the other imma alayhim salam. There is no harm now because we have plenty of riwayat that give us a, a level of certainty that yes, the first and foremost manifestation of that ayah is Amir al Mu'mineen. But after Amir al Mu'mineen, who is going to contain the ilm of the kitab? This is now passed down to each and every one of the appointed successors of Rasulullah and the appointed, divinely appointed. A imma from the holy blessed tongue of Rasulullah under the command and the order of Allah Azza wa Jal. I hope that answers the question for you. Uh, I actually have a follow up if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, if you're talking about the chain uh, extending, so it's referring to Imam Ali initially as in the who, and yeah. then the chain extends to anybody who Allah has appointed. Correct. Then what is it that when God is talking about in Nama wa Rasuluhu wa Ladina Amanu in plural? Alladina yukimun again plural mm -hmm. uh, yukimun wahum rakiun. This time mm -hmm. he uses plural tense to refer to the whole chain of imams right. and not just one person again. Why not Alladina yukim is salat wa yut is zakat wa huwa raki? Very good question. In the Quran, we've got different ayat of, of the Quran whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in plural but he means one person. He speaks in one person but he means plural. There's different ayat of the Quran. Um, if I if I, if you're able to private message me, I will send you a list of ayat of the Quran whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has interchanged using these things. However, let's say for argument's sake, this is a plural point that you just mentioned. Just for argument's sake, let's say this is plural. We have a riwayah in Wasail al-Shia. Uh, quoted by Shaykh Hur al Amali. I don't know where the original source was from, but we have a riwayah from Imam al Sadiq salam, that says each and every one of us from the Ahlul Bayt salam, have implemented this ayah. It was amazing when I read this, this riwayah. He says each and every one of us have implemented this riwayah. But that's just to couple and to give us a, a helping hand towards understanding what potentially could be. But if I could ask Brother Muhammad Hussein to get your contact details and forward it to me, then inshallah I will give you about three or four examples proven from Balaghawi scholars, Sunni and Shia, whereby Allah has used plural for singular and singular for plural. Now, that could beg the question, okay, that throws the whole idea about uh, out of the, of, the, of the woods about uh, Rasulullah, you know, being the singular pronoun, etc. 
when you're looking at the verses of uh, Anzalna and Tanzil of, of the Holy Book, we have not got a single discre discre discrepancy when it comes to the pronoun of kaf singular with the preposition of ala in the Quran. When that's the case, when you don't have a singular uh, discrepancy, thereafter we can say, Alhamdulillah, this is established uh, to uh, a singular person and that is none other than there's someone who's meant who's written a, a message here uh, a sister um, it says in the example of the verses you mentioned in Surah Ibrahim it says Anzalna ilayka. what is the difference between ilayka and alayk in the Quranic Arabic alayka is what we call isti'la isti'la means from one higher realm or one higher place it could be metaphysical it could be physical coming down upon something else. Isti'la is from, from, you have to get the understanding of from higher to lower, i.e. this thing is happening upon something, okay? It's taking place, this action is taking place upon someone. Ilaika is towards, i.e. is normally in benefit, benefit in kind, they would say, okay? It's moving towards that thing from one, from one area to another area, but the understanding of it coming from above, down, below, onto something else is not understood in ila it's only understood on ala there's another question here uh brother muhammad hussein is okay if i continue to read this out yes definitely there's a few yeah. questions on uh, on the chat box uh, you're more sure. than welcome to take it on okay so kindly explain it clearly further i hope uh, i've just answered the brother so hopefully that would be able to help that Sure, sure. So I've just posted your WhatsApp number on the general chat box. Uh, so anyone who needs uh, some further clarifications, they can uh, they can uh, text you privately. And sure. in the meantime, if there's someone who raises their hand, we'll call upon them to ask their question. Uh, if not, then they are more than welcome to paste it on the chat box. I know some of the sisters will be more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, you can take them on as you see in the general chat box. Sure. So is it a good question here, a practical question? How would you suggest we approach the translation or the tafsir? Should we do it in order, starting from the first surah onwards or starting from topics that are relevant to us? Very nice question. OK, so there's a, a common uh, methodology in the Hawza where we have both of these. So we call it tafsir al-mawdu'i and tafsir al-tartibi. If I'm being completely honest, right? And I know everyone has busy lives, etc. I think doing both at the same time is very important. Okay, but more importantly than that is to be in touch with someone who has access to books whereby they can guide you and they can channel the discussions in the correct um, way. And um, together, you guys can learn. Okay, so there are uh, tafasir out there that are now available in English. Okay. Sometimes those tafsirs are able to be understood. Sometimes you might need help uh, in, in sort of understanding what that person is saying. So I know uh, Tafsir al-Mizan, they're working on it as we speak. Um, much of the first uh, four or five juz have been translated, uh, especially the, the, like, you know, from Surah Al-Fatiha up until I think Surah Yunus has been translated with good English, okay? That's a good place to start of, of tafsir, although that might be quite heavy because it's very philosophical and lots of depth involved. There are other tafsir that are out there available, but this is really important that we should be sitting in majalis, whereby the topic at hand from someone who's able to coach you through it and help you through it, uh, that person is able to uh, have tafsir discussions with you. Okay. Someone said, if I read the Sunni version of the translation, is that okay or would that be a problem? Um, when I was at university, I used to have, uh, I used to live in an area whereby there was a lot of um, Wahhabi translated Qur'ans, okay? Sometimes it can be misleading. The best uh, thing to do is to use websites where you've got about five or six different translations and have a look at all of them. Many a time the translation are pretty good, they're okay, but sometimes you do get mistakes in the translation which can mislead our understanding, okay? What do you mean when you said trustworthy people? Who in the hadith? So whenever we um, uh, look at a hadith, we have to look at the chain of narrations as well. Um, and we have to just establish 
uh, in a in a uh, scholastic way uh, the types of people that are being mentioned not all the time it depends from which topic to topic depends from what book to book and it depends on the context as well but it's good practice to look at the narrators of the ahadith and make sure that they are trustworthy people it helps us in giving us a higher state of iman and um itminan certainty a level a, a decent state of um um i can be comfortable in accepting a hadith okay so this is this is what we mean by trustworthy okay what i'll do is uh, inshallah uh, brother muhammad hussein i will leave uh, it there now because it's exactly uh, 12.30 here, so it must be 11 o'clock over there. I don't want to take anyone else's time. And inshallah, we will reconvene tomorrow and perhaps look at some more uh, akhlaqi traits of Amir al-Mu'mineen through Nahj al-Balagha. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, habibi ilahi al-alameen, abi al-qasmi mustafa muhammad wa ala alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Once again, Sheikh, thank you so much for dedicating your time in the holy month of Ramadan. No uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've, uh, brothers and sisters, we've come to the end of today's session. Uh, just keep in mind, we have the pleasure of having Sheikh one more time tomorrow, uh, where he will be discussing uh, further on this topic. In the meantime, I'd just like to remind everyone that we have some events that are running on the side of AYN. These are interesting events uh, geared towards the youth that, uh, inshallah, you can take a look and benefit from. The first one is the pre-university prep course. Uh, kind reminder that there is two days to go for registration. This is a fun and creative and also potentially life-changing course for brothers and sisters that are planning to uh, study abroad and are also studying within their own respective countries, how to navigate uh, the whole university experience, inshallah. The second, uh, once again, I apologize, we will be having the slide. Yes, thank you. The second event that is uh, coming up for uh, completion is the Rube Goldberg Challenge. This is a family challenge that uh, has very exciting prizes, as you can see. And there are also two days remaining to submit your video for the Rube Goldberg Challenge. The third and final event that is uh, occurring on the side of AYN right now, that inshallah will be of benefit to the youth, is the Kahoot quiz based on the Youth Times magazine. The Youth Times magazine is an initiative by the Africa Youth Network under Africa Federation wherein the youth of the community have come forward and produced a publication that is the one that you see on the screen is the first edition create and it has a lot of uh, wholesome and beneficial content geared towards the youth. These uh, magazines are available uh, within all of the Africa Federation Jamaats. You are more than welcome to contact your local representatives from AYN as well as find them being sold at your respective mosque and Husseinia compounds. The end of the month, inshallah, we will have a Kahoot quiz based on the content within this uh, Youth Times magazine. And inshallah, the winners will also be awarded with exciting prizes, as you can see on the screen. So once again, jazakallah to all of you for attending this course. Thank you to Sheikh for taking the time. And inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Please be uh, alert on the WhatsApp group where we will be sharing further details on tomorrow's course. And if there are any changes, then we will communicate that in due course, inshallah. Thank you, everyone. And once again, Iltamasa Dua, and hope you have an enlightening rest of the evening.